So hi everyone, my name is Jonathan David D. Cruz and I will be your lecturer for Field Study 1. So we are now at the seventh episode of Field Study 1. So for the seventh episode, we'll be talking about physical and personal aspect of classroom management. So why is it important for us to have an effective classroom management? So number one is that it increases the chance of the student to success since the, there is, as I have mentioned in the previous episodes, that the students can have an established um, routine, right? Like say, for example, good, saying good morning. Now they can take that in their future jobs. That's a simple greetings, but that actually influences the perspective of, of the student or the learner towards working. Apart from that is inside the classroom towards success and learning is that they can focus more on what's more important on that session, on that class, para pag-aralan nila yung topic at hindi na aralin ng aralin yung routines, okay? And number two is that paves the way for teacher to engage student learning. So once the routine is already established, the teacher could already no, uh, use it continuously along the academic year and then eventually no the the teacher could actually jump into uh, right into the discussion already next is that uh, it helps create an organized classroom environment of course having an or organized classroom environment is very important when it comes to uh, learning because it allows the learner to concentrate in their learning and allows the teacher to concentrate on their teaching Next is increased instructional time, so meaning that there's more time for the topic to be discussed and then creates consistency in the employment of rules and regulations. Again, take note, the rules established on the day one should be the rules used or utilized until to the end of the school year. But there were changes along the way. It's definitely understandable, but as much as possible, we want to use the established rule in day one up to the last day of their classes with you. Next is aligns uh, management strategies with school-wide standards. As I have mentioned in the previous episodes of this field study uh, lecture series is that the routine or the policies, rules that are being established in the classroom base must have legal basis. Basically, this is dependent on the school-wide standards. You can add classroom uh, classroom rules inside your school, but you cannot uh, inside your classroom. But you cannot actually remove one uh, the ones that are um, uh, present in the school-wide standard uh, school-wide standard policies. Next is the decrease misbehavior. Uh, this decrease misbehavior in the classroom. Because the rules are established and so does the punishments, the reinforcements. But then again, when it talks about punishment and reinforcements, there are prescribed reinforcements, acceptable reinforcements to be used. Not the ones in your mind that are very uh, physical. We do not use physical reinforcement anymore. And of course, we, we discourage that because we do not know the situation of our learner uh, at their household. So malemo, they are being uh, punished physically inside their household and we do not want that to happen as well. Next is give students boundaries and consequences. As I have mentioned, the learners can see what may happen to them if they fail to follow the rules. Again, the rules are there not to harm the students, not to harm the teachers, no, but to help the learners establish, uh, you know, manners in the confines of the society that we have right now. And of course, to learn more. Para mas magkaroon sila ng time pagdating doon sa lecture part talaga. Kasi, uh, pangit naman if the teacher only have one hour and then every session, 30 minutes siyang nagdi-discuss ng routine. 30 minutes siyang nagdi-discuss ng routine. And that is, that would consume a lot of time para doon sa instructional time. Now, there are two major aspects when we're talking about physical and personal uh, management, of course. So, the physical 
classroom management talks about the teacher. And of course, the students. So basically, the teacher kasi ang attention na kay teacher. Number one, teachers should focus on their voice. We do not want a very high-pitched voice or very, very low-pitched voice. We want a voice that is well-modulated that can be heard at the back. But then again, this is very difficult for teachers, especially for those teachers who are teaching up to 100 students per classroom. Kailangan paabutin mo sa likod. No? Kailangan marinig ng nasa likod yung sinasabi mo. That's very difficult for a teacher. That's why we should consider um, a teacher-student ratio. Dapat considerable yun, lalo na sa classroom size then Consider yun. But then again, since we're talking about voice teachers, please take care of your voice as much as we want to eat sweets, to drink colds. There are also times where we should take good care of our voices kasi nga bilang guro, Ang, ang ating ano ay ang puhunan natin ay boses ang ano boses ang ating puhunan pangarap ang ano labanan parang the voice no so as teachers we should <laughs> we should take good care of our voices kasi nga uh, ito yung pundasyon ng ating uh, trabaho isa ito sa mga pundasyon ng ating trabaho kasi hindi kaya hindi, teachers iwasan natin din masyadong magalit kasi uh, the voice is very important. Okay. Now, going back to, to ano nga ba yung voice na gusto ng bata, ayaw niya na masyadong mataas, ayaw din niya na masyadong malakas, ayaw din na masyadong mahina, no? Uh, dapat, uh, bilang guro, modulated ang vo voices mo. Try to do um, um, vocal workouts in the morning. Simple vocal workouts like humming, singing, or try to do uh, 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 try not to drink a lot of cold water try not to eat a lot of sweets but it's okay to eat and drink a uh, cold or sweet from time to time din naman but we should take good care of your voice for female uh, teachers uh, it is encouraged to have a lipstick hmm? Papula, papulahin yung labi kasi uh, para dun sa mga nasa likod kapag hindi ka masyadong marinig they can read your lips okay so that will also help. And for boys, you can actually use uh, lip gloss maybe para ma makita din ng ano ng uh, mga bata sa likod in case na hindi marinig. Okay? Lip reading ang tawag doon. But it's okay, no? Uh, kaya yon kailangan talaga nating mga guro na ingatan nating bosses. Pangalawa is personal grooming. Okay, for some schools, a lot of schools, meron kayong established uniforms. For universities, wala masyadong established uniforms. But then again, kahit na naka-uniform ka, kailangan properly groom ka pa rin as teacher. Try to take good care of your physical health, of course, no? Kasi ikaw ay tinitingnan ng bata. Usually, teachers would look at, students would look at their teachers from head to toe. Mula sa huli huling hibla ng buhok ni sir hanggang sa talampakan, titignan nila pati sapatos mo. Tapos sa susunod na pasok mo, makaalala na naman nila kung ano yung suot mo. Kaya minsan maganda din pag naka-uniform kasi kapag uh, tawag din, kapag hindi uniform, minsan nag-uulit ka ng damit tapos mapapansin ng bata, ay sir, si sir nag-uulit, si ma'am nag-uulit. Oh, di naman kami models. no But then again, uh, teachers, you should you should look good. <laughs> it's a requirement for us to be groomed. Dapat malinis tayo tingnan. Because again, we're trying to be models of the society. Um, and it also allows, diba nga, there's actually studies also that shows that if the teacher is well-groomed, there is a higher possibility or higher chances that the student will listen, the student will uh, listen to what you are saying also. So, properly, proper grooming tayo, uh, maligo, <laughs> mga guro, uh, kahit wala ng time, <laughs> tayo maligo, um, kumain din, and then always smile, of course, as a teacher para, ano, para makerry mo yung, um, yung ano lang, <laughs> madala mo bilang guro, no? But then again, as teacher, hindi ka papasok para magpapog yung magpaganda sa classroom. Ang trabaho mo ay magturo. Pero kasama doon, kailangan properly groom ka. Kasi if you want your students to listen and to believe in what you are teaching, you should show them that you are well-groomed also. Next is, of course, attendance, teachers, punctuality. 
teachers, uh, please be on time. We do not want to be late. And uh, kung absent man, dapat reasonable because pagkapag umabsent ka, bilang guro, ang maapektuhan po ay estudyante. Hindi lang isa, hindi lang dalawa, hindi lang tatlo, kundi 50, 60, minsan isang daang estudyante pa per class. So, ilang sections pa yung tuturuan mo. So, pag umabsent ka, sabihin niyo po. Okay? And although ang teachers ay may bakasyon, Kasi bakasyon ng bata, hindi po talaga yun bakasyon. Kasi meron po trabahong binibigay sa mga teachers. Kasabay nun, pinapatin sa seminars, sa mga trainings. Tapos may, may, nga, may mga trabaho pa, may mga paperwork. Because again, the job of the teachers doesn't end when he or she enters the classroom. Okay? And when she, he or she get, uh, gets out, there's actually a bigger picture of being a teacher. Of course, personal philosophy then as teacher, you carry out and uphold your personal philosophy as a teacher. And if you said that ganito ang punishment, sundin. Kung kapag ganito ang reward, sundin. Because as teachers, we want to uphold our words. We want to embody truth, of course, excellence, and service. Ang puso nating guro ay dapat nasa paglilingkod. Ika nga, others... Uh, an article that actually says that uh, the life of a teacher is a life of a priest. Hindi tayo pwedeng maging masyadong luxurious. Hindi din tayo masyadong pwedeng, no, ano naman. So, we should be no, um, well-groomed in our uh, physical and in our own character as well. Because as teachers, tayo po ay tinitingnan ng lipunan. Tayo po ay binabantayan ng lipunan. Actually, tinitingnan nila kung, kung ano nga ba magiging response si teacher. If you actually uh, take a look at the roles of teachers, napakalawak po ng gampani ng isang guro. Okay? Now, doon naman tayo sa physical classroom management. So, as teacher, dapat well-groom ka. And of course, as much as possible, you want to well-groom your students. You want to button them up kapag may open button hole dito uh, na hindi naka-button. You want to help your students well-groom, tie their uh, hair para sa mga females. No, sinasabi natin yon Because also, we want to have students that are well-groomed also. Okay. Next naman is for physical management, number one is lighting. Now, appropriate lighting is very important because it actually also influences the uh, drive for learning of the students para mas padali nilang mabasa yung binabasa nila, mas padali nilang masulat yung sinusulat nila at magawa yung dapat nilang gawin. Ventilation. Uh, there's an appropriate temperature inside the classroom at around 25 to 27 degrees Celsius here in the Philippines. Um, hindi encourage na masyadong mainit kasi hindi makakapag-concentrate yung bata, papaypay ng papaypay. Hindi din pwedeng masyadong malamig kasi matutulog yan, makakatulog yung bata. Or lalabas ng lalabas kasi iihi ng iihi. Ayaw natin ng ganoon. Seating arrangement is also very important. Um, it's up to you kung anong seating arrangement ang gusto mo. Others use horseshoe, others use V-shape. No? Kung ano yung mas makikita mo, mas appropriate, so be it. Next is structure and design of the classroom. Of course, it's very important. Whiteboard ba? Maganda. Butas-butas na, na blackboard. Ayaw natin ng ganun. Upuan. Um, dapat maayos din yung mga upuan natin kasi doon nakaupuan. As students, no, yung upuan ninyo, wag yung sulatan ng sulatan ng scribbles kasi hindi lang kayo ang umuupo doon. Pangalawa, that's your learning space and learning area. Huwag niyong sirain yung upuan ninyo. And then, uh, windows, linisin. Kaya nga, I actually encourage uh, students should actually clean their classrooms kasi kapag silang naglinis, mas papahalagahan nila yung nilinis nilang classroom. And the next is physical space and learning stations. Dapat ang bata, meron silang learning spaces and learning stations inside the classroom kasi hindi ma mahirap pag di makagalaw. Now, these are just some of the subtopics of the two important facets of classroom management. The personal classroom management and physical classroom management. Remember, school is the second home of your students. So, we want it to make it look good for physical management. Okay? And ayaw natin bilang mga guro na magulo na nga yung ano na mga 
ano ng uh, hindi natin alam kung anong sado ng bata na magulo din ang bahay nila pagpunta sa school magulo din ayun natin ng ganun uh, actually we want to establish manners good manners inside the classroom to keep it clean to keep it organized para pagdating nila sa bahay nila organized and clean din sila sa kanilang mga tahanan actually um Parents actually love when they see their student, uh, they see their kids cleaning sa school. Sinasabi pa nga minsan ng mga magulang, uh, baka sir, baka pwede sa bahay din, maglinis din yung anak ko, ba? Diba? A friend of mine shared it. So, so you see, no, um, classes of management is not very easy. It's not, um, it's not an easy task. Uh, kasi you have to keep yourself clean. You, can, you need to step up as teacher. And also, dapat malinis din yung classroom mo. Dapat maayos yung classroom mo. Appropriate for learning. There is no perfect classroom. Uh, face-to-face classroom or virtual classroom. There's no perfect classroom. But there is an appropriate classroom. Now, this by discussions are just confined or limited to face-to-face discussions. But then again, when we talk about virtual learning, it's far more difficult because the situation of the learners in their homes is difficult in the situation of the teachers sa tinuturuan niya. So, hindi mo talaga makokontrol. Unlike uh, if you are face-to-face, -face, you can actually somehow control the temperature, yung electric fan pala kasi, somehow pa-open yung lightings, di ba? O kaya pabuksan yung magbintana for, for ventilation or aircon. But, Pagdating sa bahay, hindi natin alam, hindi namin alam mga guro kung ano nga ba ang kalagayan ng mga estudyante sa kanilang mga tahanan habang nag online classes. So actually, uh, I consider classroom management as one of the most difficult uh, facets to, to do, especially here, especially in doing online classes. So that would be the end of our discussions for physical and personal aspects of classroom management. Should you have any questions, please feel free to email me. And thank you and God be with you.